So I was looking for an easy way to convert 2D photos into 3D printed images. Stick around to see how I did it. I was doing a little bit of research and I found out that I could convert a 2D photo or a picture into a 3D print and it was called a lithopane. So how the process works is it takes the 2D image and where it's lighter, it doesn't print as much, but where it's darker, it prints more. So less light can come through. I researched different methods of using Blender and ZBrush, but essentially what I was looking for was a really simple, easy way of converting the images into lithopanes. So after a little bit more research, I found a piece of software called photo to mesh So photo to mesh does exactly what the title implies. It takes a photo and it converts it into a 3D mesh. Now the beauty of this software is it does more than just create lithopanes. But for this video, I'm going to concentrate on the lithopanes itself. Full disclosure, Ransom Software did supply me with a license so I could fully review this piece of software. But in saying that, I wasn't paid to do this review. I did make it clear that I would be creating an unbiased review and that I would be including pros and cons to show how I really felt about the software. But in saying that, let's get on and have a look at how the software works. Okay, so here we have the Photo to Mesh version 6 software. And for now, just ignore the Wookiee. So we'll go to the File menu and open Image. What we'll do is we'll just choose an image here. Who's that handsome devil? We'll hit open. Okay, so here what you can do is you can change the brightness settings. If you want to take out some of those dark spots, change the contrast as well. For now, I'll leave that at 1.2 and 1.2. Those are the settings that I've found work well for this image. So I'll click next. This is where you can rotate the image if you need to. I don't want to, so I'll just leave that as is. Hit next. And this is where you can select part or all of the image. And for this, I'll just select all the image and hit next. Okay, so let me just step you through some of the settings here. So one of the first ones is smoothing. So you can see the image down here. It looks a little bit blurry. So what we can do is we can change that to 0.05 hit recreate model and you'll see that the lithopane has more definition now to it so that's one of the things now the next thing is the x sample and the y samples at the moment they're set to 250 and that's 250 times it's sampling the length of the photo so we can change that to 500 and it will be doubled so the stl file now is 24 megabytes it was 12, so it's pretty much double that. Now, if we change the Y samples to 500, that has doubled what the X samples was. So it's quadrupled it basically. So that then brings more defini definition to the image. So have a look down here. And when we hit recreate, you can see that it's defined that image a lot more. So there's a lot more detail in there. Okay. The next step here is you can define how long you want it to be. So at the moment it's at 100, which is 10 centimeters or four inches. And we've locked the Y dimension so it doesn't stretch it out of shape. So 100 is fine for me for this moment. The next is the height of the mesh or the Z height. Now this one's set at two millimeters. So what I like to do is I like to change that to 3.4 and I'll change the slab thickness to 0.8. So the slab thickness is how thick it will be when it's completely white. So 0.8 of a millimeter, that's about, if you're printing at 0.2 millimeter layer height, you're looking at about four layers. So that's pretty good, I think. And 3.4 millimeters, that's how high the darkest point or where black is on the image will be. So if we hit recreate model, you'll see that gets a bit thicker and you can actually see there's a little bit more detail in there because we've increased the Z height. So the other thing is the invert mesh. Now at the moment, it's doing it just like a normal image would, but if you want to make it look like a negative, Take off the invert mesh. 
And now when you print that out, that will look like a negative. I like that as a normal image. So I'm just gonna recreate that. Now that's pretty much it for the basic settings for a lithopane. There's other ones that you can go into, but for the moment, that's, that's fine. The only other thing is under image placement, I've set the width and the height to 90. So that way it gives me a little bit around the edges so I can mount it in some sort of a frame a little bit later. So in the position 50% and 50%, that just means dead center. So we'll hit OK. And that's pretty much it. So for lithopane, you can go to file menu, save STL. and save it in there done okay so i've pulled in the non-inverted mesh into simplify 3d and you can see there the different height mats that you've got so that's the negative image so let's have a look and see and prepare to print how long that takes so we're looking at about an hour and 32 minutes and we're using about almost 20 grams at a cost of about 79 cents that's in Australian dollars so that's not too bad um, let's get out of that though and we'll remove that one and let's have a look at the other one. So you can see there now. That's a lot thicker on the edges. And let's see how long that takes. Okay, so due to the increase around the edges and there'll be infill there as well, which I've set at 25%, You've got two hours and seven minutes, about 9,700, about 29 to 30 grams. So an extra 10 grams, and it's going to cost $1.18 in Australian dollars. So not too bad. Um, I could probably bring the layer height down a little bit, but I'm, I'm quite happy with that because I like to have the definition there. So when it's ready, just begin to print. Let's have a look at some time lapse. So here you can see both lithopanes printing side by side. On the left we have the non-inverted lithopane, which is the one that will give an effect like a photo negative. The right side is the inverted lithopane, which will appear similar to a photo. The XYZ DaVinci 1.0 3D printer is extruding ABS filament at 220 degrees Celsius onto a heated bed of about 90 degrees Celsius. The lithopanes were sliced using Simplify 3D, which currently sells online for about $149 US dollars. After using XYZ software and Slicer, the one with the 3 instead of the E, I find that Simplify 3D slices faster and a lot better than the other two, and I feel that the money I invested into it was well worth it. In just a moment you'll see the lithopane on the left hand side stop printing, but what happened next was the G code for sending the hot end back to its home failed to send. So when I show that off, you'll get to see that in the finished product. So the right hand side print is just about to finish up, so stick around to see how they both turned out. So after all that awesome time-lapse footage, here we have the lithopanes. The non-inverted lithopane has the appearance of an old film negative when held up to the light. For me personally, this is not the effect that I was looking for. Now you can see the inverted image and it looks great. You can see the dark areas of the shirt and the light areas of the face and everything is in really nice contrast. And just for comparison's sake, here's an early test I did with an image that had the background removed. So firstly, let's get the cons out of the way. And I must say, I was hard pressed to find many. The only major con that I could find is that it wasn't simple in the GUI to find the measurements. Now, after a little bit of hunting around on the online help, I did find that the units of measurements were in millimeters. However, if it was included in the software's GUI, I think it'd make it a little bit easier for new users to find their way around the software. Once again, this is probably just more of a constructive criticism than a con. 
So onto the pros. Now, after watching quite a few videos of the construction method of lithopanes from a 2D image into a 3D image, I found that this piece of software, photo to mesh does it a lot quicker than any of the other methods out there. So if you don't already own the big softwares like ZBrush or MaxCon, you can get the same effect from just using this small piece of software. Second would be the cost. Now ZBrush is a piece of software that professionals use to model 3D models. It can be used to make lithopanes, however, it does cost quite a bit of money. So if you're not looking to spend or you know learn a new piece of software, then for under $100, you can get photo to mesh. There's no big learning curve and it just does what it does. No mucking around. Overall, if you're looking to get into lithopanes or converting 2D images into 3D meshes, then I think photo mesh is the perfect fit. In future videos, I will be exploring other features of photo to mesh, so make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you saw anything here that I didn't cover or you've got a question for me, then leave me a comment down below or send me a question on Twitter. I'm at TechWizTime. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up and maybe even leave a comment down below. If you do enjoy the content that I'm providing here, make sure you subscribe to my channel as it really helps me a lot. And as always, imagine, learn, create. Bye.